Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Happy Barra. Its continuing mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and civilizations, to boldly go where no 100 pound rodent has gone before, and to ask the question, where is the hot alien girlfriend that Mass Effect promised me? Prepare to learn the truth that they don't want you to know on this episode of Happy Barra. Hello everyone and welcome to Happy Barra. I'm Dr. Happy and today we're going to be talking about aliens, or more accurately, the lack thereof. Look, I'm a huge nerd, so my social life isn't the best. But there was one thing that let me keep believing in love. One thing that all those sci-fi movies and video games promised would make it all okay. And that one thing was the hope that I would be able to find a blue alien woman who would love me for me. Did that happen? No! Is it gonna happen? Probably not. Now I gotta make a video explaining why I gotta settle for a regular girlfriend all because of a little thing that science calls the Fermi Paradox. Now let's get started before I give myself a hernia. So what exactly is the Fermi Paradox? Well first, we gotta start at the beginning. The Fermi Paradox was named after Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, who just so happens to be the guy who created the world's first nuclear reactor in 1942. But nobody cares about that, we're talking about things that matter, like aliens. So one day in the summer of 1950, Dr. Fermi and his colleagues were on their way to lunch, when the topic of faster than light travel and recent UFO sightings was brought up. Later, while they were probably sharing an oversized plate of spaghetti, Enrico exclaims, But where is everybody? Where are all of the aliens? My god, Enrico, you are always wanting to talk about aliens. Could we please talk about something else? Fine, let's talk about how Emil likes to wear high heels when he thinks no one is watching. <laughs> The exact quote isn't known, so you can't prove that it didn't go down like that. This simple question of, where is everybody, is a lot more profound than what a first glance might suggest. The observable universe is massive. But since I don't want to break anyone's mind with the concept of infinity, we're gonna go ahead and just shrink it to the Milky Way galaxy. That's us. The Milky Way galaxy is approximately 100,000 light years across. So that means if someone were to shine a light from one edge of the galaxy at the same time that humans first invented fire, by the time that beam of light, which mind you was going as fast as the known laws of the universe will allow, hit the other side, humans would have already invented the smartphone and would be able to tweet about it. In this gargantuan stretch of space, there's about 100 billion to 400 billion stars, with 20 billion of them being considered to be like our sun. But according to the SETI Institute, only about 1.5% of those stars have planets that are similar to conditions on Earth. But even after all of that, that's still 300 million planets in our galaxy alone where life could theoretically evolve. And it doesn't stop there either. Earth is 4.5 billion years old, and it took life only about a billion years to show up on Earth. The age of the Milky Way is more than 13 times that. So not only does our galaxy have the resources to produce life, but it's also had plenty of time to do it. So looking back on the question, where is everybody, is a lot more haunting now. This is the Fermi Paradox, and why it's so paradoxical. So you'd think that the law of basic probability would have resulted in us getting a you-up text from some form of advanced civilization, right? Well, no. As of June 2023, we have been given zero evidence of intelligent life that can't be explained away by copious drug use. And the whole Raid Area 51 thing was a bust, so I doubt that the US government is gonna share its secrets anytime soon. The US government spends 25 times more on the Department of Defense than it does on NASA's entire budget every fiscal year. We already know what happens when you shoot a person, I wanna know what happens when you shoot an alien. As far as we know, no one has been able to come up with a solid solution to the Fermi Paradox, no matter what cringy YouTube clickbait might tell you. But if you know anything about scientists, they will abandon all rational thinking in order to figure out the most rational thinking for something previously thought unknowable. Here's the thing about astronomy. It's a kind of science that isn't afraid of diving headfirst into the more theoretical territory. 
Over time, plenty of hypotheses have been laid out trying to unparadox the Fermi paradox. These range from reasonable to insane to outright terrifying. And if you all don't mind, I'd love to take some time to talk about a few of the more notable ones. I'm fast. I'm so fast, you couldn't even comprehend how fast I am. So we'll be starting with the more mundane ones first. As I illustrated at the beginning, the galaxy is freaking massive. And maybe the speed of light is a hard cap on just how fast something can move. If we were to establish contact with something we think might be an alien civilization that's 20,000 light years away, it would take 40,000 years just to get a response. By the time that message reaches anyone who would hear it, they could have either gone extinct or given up even trying to communicate with anyone. Imagine waiting 40,000 years just to get ghosted by your intergalactic Tinder date. It was kind. You is smart, you is important. Okay, so hear me out. What if Earth is an incredibly special place and should be treasured and protected at all costs because we only got one shot at making things work? Crazy, I know. The rare Earth hypothesis suggests that the incredibly unique conditions on Earth that allowed life to evolve are insanely rare. Earth ticks a lot of weirdly specific boxes that allow life to continue to exist, and if any of them were taken away, then life would quickly be extinguished. These range from simple things like having a slight tilt keeping the weather mild, to having gas giants protecting us from space debris striking us all the time. So we finally have someone to blame for not having a pet velociraptor, and those someones are Jupiter and Saturn. Really drop the ball on that one, you guys. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Aight, so now we're gonna go ahead and dip our toes in the well of existential dread that the Fermi Paradox is so good at drawing from. The Great Filter is the idea that all intelligent civilizations have to pass a certain trial, or trials, that are so exceedingly difficult to progress through that only the best of the best can continue to exist and take to the stars. This leaves us in one of two scenarios, one of which is significantly more comforting than the last. The first is that we've already crossed this Great Filter, and it's only a matter of time before we develop the technology to put on our big boy pants and become a spacefaring civilization. The the other is that the filter is in front of us and things are about to get real bad for us. Uh, Gerald, Gerald get the camera, he's having his first nuclear war! Oh, look at how precious he is! Oh, that one's going in the scrapbook. You saved me. Why? Mm, monkey. You ever go to the zoo and say to yourself, wow, look at that big dumb ape. Now imagine that on a galactic scale. The idea is that the Earth has been contacted by aliens, but humans have not. Maybe a huge collective of aliens called the Learned Intelligence of Galactic Matters and Aliens have taken a look at Earth and said, look, but don't touch. Like an incredibly weird galactic zoo of some kind. If you're familiar with the Prime Directive from Star Trek, then it's pretty much that. Or maybe they're all just waiting for us to cross a certain threshold of advancement before revealing themselves to us to guide our hand in building the future. Ladies and gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause. After years of sacrifice and study, we have finally done it. We have made anime real. Now how about we cut into this cake to celebrate? Hello! It looks like he may commit suicide. Ah, oh. Suicide is badass. No, 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 no. So, yeah, it's pretty much what's written on the tin. It's a very real possibility that the final destination of all intelligent civilizations is a self-imposed extinction. Humans are already doing a bang-up job pushing this one to the top of the pile of the most likely solutions to the Fermi Paradox. Heck, only 60 years ago we were literally only one button press away from potentially wiping out 3.5 billion years of evolution because of political disagreements between two self-important superpowers over which proxy nation they could set up their toys in. Also, there was a quirked up Cubano with a dairy addiction in there somewhere, I don't know, I haven't made the Cold War episode yet. This mailbox is mine, that blue balloon, the month of June, they're mine, 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 mine. Manifest destiny in space. So I know that I said that the Milky Way galaxy is 13 billion years old and theoretically life could have evolved during that time, but I want to add a little asterisk to the end of that and say that it was probably very hard for life to evolve during the early life of the galaxy, mostly because everything liked to blow up all the time. 
But Earth formed right at the end of this galaxy-spanning death party, so maybe we're among the first. But that doesn't mean we'll be the last, since the galaxy has never been more welcoming to life than it is right now. A whole wealth of alien civilizations could be evolving simultaneously alongside us, with each of us bursting into an unclaimed galaxy all at the same time. This is kinda scary because it means that we're in a race to the finish without even knowing it. One metaphor from Kyrgyz... Kurzgisagat, Bob Saget, compares the potential race for galactic resources to humans cutting down a forest. It destroys any possibility for any of the squirrels living in that forest to develop a squirrel society. Humans didn't destroy the forest because they hate squirrels. They did it because they needed wood and had no idea that the squirrels were even capable of building a society. Now imagine that on a galactic scale, and now you realize how fast you advance to a spacefaring civilization determines whether you're the lumberjack or the squirrel. The Dark Forest Hypothesis is named after a novel called The Dark Forest, which is about the author's self-insert who is given absolute authority over all of Earth's resources to prepare for an upcoming alien invasion, but uses the first third of the book using his power to find the ultimate girlfriend. No, I'm not kidding. The Dark Forest Hypothesis suggests that all spacefaring civilizations are both silent and paranoid, out of fear of other spacefaring civilizations. Any civilization that makes a sound is instantly destroyed by the other silent civilizations out of fear of it becoming a threat to their own survival. Or they're destroyed by one giant galaxy-spanning apex predator. But that all hinges on the civilization making itself known to the rest of the galaxy, so we should be just fine. It's not like we're constantly bombarding space with all sorts of electromagnetic frequencies with the express purpose of trying to find life on other planets- oh wait. That's exactly what we're doing. Oh. Oh no. Nah, I'm sure it'll be fine. What's one more piece of existential dread on the growing pile of existential dread that living in the current year brings? Now there's tons more potential explanations for the Fermi Paradox, but I didn't want to turn this into a three hour video. These are just a handful of the ones that I found interesting, and I encourage you to do your own research to see what else is out there when it comes to addressing the Fermi Paradox. The equivalent to our understanding of the galaxy would be taking a teaspoon and dipping it in the ocean, and then guessing what kind of creatures live in it based on only what you're able to bring to the surface. Humanity is still very young in the grand scheme of things, and if we don't alt F4 ourselves first, we got a long time to explore the universe we live in. And on that note, I think that's a good place to wrap up. If you enjoyed your time in my class, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Happy Bara, and I for one look forward to what we learn about our universe. Unless the Dark Forest turns out to be true. Then in that case, I had nothing to do with it, and I welcome our alien overlords. Class dismissed. What?